right. In this video, we're going to look at how can we find the area of the triangle, nope, the octagon that is shown here. So this octagon is regular, which means that all the side lengths are the same, and it's inscribed in a circle. Very specifically, the circle that it's inscribed of, we know that it has a radius of three. So that's all the information that we're going to need to know in order to find the area of this entire octagon. The first thing that we want to do is we want to notice that we can actually split our octagon into these triangles. Now, the lines that I've just drawn, because they go from the center of the circle out to the edge of the circle, these are the radii. And we said that the radius for this one is three. Because both of these are three, we know that what we just drew in is an isosceles triangle. Now, that's not actually going to impact our finding the area right now, but it's just good information to have. With this triangle, I'm going to use the formula that the area of a triangle is equal to one half a b sine of c. And this formula is derived using the law of sines. There's other ways that you can do it. It is just a take on the fact that A represents the quote unquote base of your triangle and B sine of C represents the height. It saves us a lot of work. We could in theory dot down a apothem here. So from the center of the shape to the edge of the shape, this would be a 90 degree angle it would create two right triangles, and we could calculate the height and work from there, but it's gonna be a lot messier, and so we're just going to be working with this formula right here. Now, to also think a little bit more about said formula, I told you that A represents the base of the triangle, and B sine C represents the height. Another way to think about this is that A is one side of your triangle, B is another side of your triangle, and C is the angle between the two sides. So if I want to be able to use this formula to find the area of this triangle, well, I have side one, I have side two, I just need to know the angle between them. So if I go back up to my whole shape here, this is an octagon. So there are eight different sides, which means that I could create eight different congruent triangles throughout it. If I were to do the entire circle, this would be 360 degrees. So my angle right here, theta, is 360 divided by the number of triangles I could create, which is the number of sides, which is eight. So real quickly, 360 divided by eight is 45 degrees. Now we're ready to find the area of this triangle here. So, so the area is gonna be equal to one half, this side that I know, which is three, the other side, which I know, which is three, sine of that angle between them, which is 45. If I put this into my calculator, I get approximately 3.18 units squared. Now this has given me the area of just this triangle. In order to find the area of the entire octagon, I need to multiply this by the number of triangles we could create. So the area of the octagon would be 8 times the number that I just found here, which gives me 25.46 units squared. And there you have it. I will state... I did not put 3.18 in. Um, our calculators will carry numbers for us. So in my calculator, I did eight times whatever I got here. I carry that much, much longer um, number in order to get a more precise answer here. As the only thing that would really change in doing this for a different shape is that your theta will be divided by how many sides your shape has. And your side links, when you put them in here, will be whatever the radius is. So this was specifically an octagon with a radius of three, but this method could be used for any inscribed regular polygon um, given a circle where you know the radius.